Welcome back to the channel everyone. This is Clayton. It seems that a majority of people who have watched my video regarding the Menards 1080p mini spy camera must have found the video informative and have gotten a lot of enjoyment out of it. Since the video now has around 55 views and I can assume that that's still going up and I am very impressed by that and I'm very pleased by that. But today I wanted to review something else that isn't camera related. Uh, something that had pertained to my situation with my digital media and communication background. Uh, something that I had used um, in a professional setting not too long back. And um, I wanted to show off this item because I figured that out of all of the things that I would need for my professional career, that this is something that would be uh, probably a must. With that being, this VidPro professional video and broadcast microphone kit which was originally a 13 piece set but I decided to buy mine used with some of the pieces missing and this is the XM55 model not to be confused with the XM88 model which I believe is a larger uh, cardioid, super cardioid microphone like the one you're seeing here, a shotgun microphone and um, I wanted to give a review for this kit and give my thoughts on it uh, having bought it the other day. So to give a little bit of context to my background, um, like I've said in multiple videos on my channel, um, I went to a, a big university and I had studied uh, digital media communications under the radio, television, and digital media department. And um, when I was uh, attending class, I believe in 2022, our uh, professor gave us an assignment where I was in a group and I'd worked on an independent film for another student. Um, the film was called uh, God Problem and um, we had used a, a super cardioid shotgun microphone to record our audio and um, I was thoroughly impressed by the overall quality of that microphone and it left an impression on me to where I wanted to invest in this microphone. a, uh, a certainly cheaper microphone than the one that we had used which I believe was a Rode microphone with a blimp um, for those of you that uh, probably work in the industry you'll know that a blimp is for um, outdoor recording and usually a windy situation you know you do get your accessories that uh, mitigate that but uh, anyway yeah we used a super cardioid shotgun microphone on that set and I was just absolutely blown away by the audio quality that it produced for uh, the film. And uh, anyway, I wanted to show off the contents of this package. Um, you can see here that there's some technical information. There it goes, it's uh, focusing. Um, it originally came with a, uh, an alkaline uh, AA battery. That, of course, is for powering on the microphone. Um, here's some more specific specs right here. Um, it tells you what type of microphone, uh, the uh, polar pattern, which is the also known as the pickup pattern. Of course, it's super cardioid, so it's very sensitive. And um, I can attest to that because I tried it out the other day and I was impressed. Um, it tells you uh, the output connection on here and all sorts of different information. And then you also have a um, little paragraph at least probably a paragraph's worth of uh, text here explaining what you get in the package. But of course mine was bought used so some of the items are missing with that being the uh, shockproof mount, the cold shoe mount, the uh, microphone holder mount which would also fit onto here on the cold shoe. Um, the two, f let's see here, the, oh wow 26 foot, yeah the 26 foot XLR cable is missing um, the hand grip is missing, and of course the original battery. But this is all just minor things because some of these accessories are inexpensive, and they the what you're really buying is the microphone itself. It's the bread and butter of the whole setup, aside from the other cables, which I found out the other day I actually needed. But uh, anyway, I want to show off some of the stuff you get in this package. So when you first open this up. Uh, you will see that we get what is referred to as a dead cat, uh, which is also an outdoor wind muff. Um, it kind of looks like a rabbit's foot, 
but um, the industry term is a dead cat. Lots of people refer to it as that. Um, I've seen people make um, like budget versions of this with like them fake mustaches that you get at the Dollar Tree or just, you know, stuff like that. Just budget ways of making an, a, your own version of this if you get, have a small microphone. But you get uh, this, which is for wind cancellation. You get this foam. Of course, you've probably seen these before. This uh, foam muff right here, which also does the same thing. Although, I must admit that the Dead Cat does a much better job at noise cancellation during a windy day than this one right here. Um, of course, you get this. And then we have the microphone itself. Um, as you can see here, oh, it, I was trying to get it to focus. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Anyway, this here is the XM55. It's a condenser shotgun microphone. Um, it does use phantom power, actually. That's what this third option is right here on the microphone. Hmm. I don't know why, but the phone isn't really folk. There it goes. Yeah, it has phantom power, an on-off switch, and then this down here is the sleeve that you can unscrew. If I'll show you here in a second, if I can get this off. This is for your um, your battery. Of course, I'm using a rechargeable, even though the person that sold me this gave me a free uh, battery, which is fine, but I didn't really need it. And then you have your XLR connection here at the back, which is, of course, for your cables that you get with this setup. And then you can see here, this is what the actual microphone itself looks like. Um, it, it's pretty sensitive, I must say. Um, of course, with it being a super cardioid microphone, it doesn't necessarily work like a normal microphone. There's certain situations where it'll sound better or worse, so... You just have to take that uh, as it is. And um, I'm going to show you the other contents you get. Um, you get, oh, here we go. We got an XLR male to female adapter. Um, here, I'll, you can actually see that right there. Um, there is an XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter. That's a XLR uh, female. There we go. That's an XLR female, and then we have a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack here at the end. This is useful. I use this. Um, I didn't need like a full sized, like massive wire to go from this microphone, so this short one actually kind of helped me out. And um, I kind of got lucky. These are the rubber uh, bands for the shockproof mount. They're supposed to cut down on noise, but the shock the uh, shockproof mount is uh, missing. And uh, you also get this adapter here, this jack, which is a quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter uh, jack. And um, there it goes. Um, I actually have a pair of uh, Tascam headphones that use this same style of uh, jack. And um, I bought those used, I believe. And um, the jack was missing, so that is kind of a, a nice little addition. And then, aside from, here we go, aside from the battery, here. Of course, I didn't get the original battery. This is an Energizer battery, but, you know, at least it was free. And um, the final thing you get is, of course, a silica packet. That's, of course, the, if you get moisture inside there. But, yeah, these are the contents of what you get inside the actual package. Anyway, aside from what you get in the package, I wanted to speak more about the actual microphone itself. Of course, I brought up the fact that it is a super cardioid microphone and that it's more sensitive. Um, I wanted to speak about how this actual microphone operates, and I wanted to give some examples so that uh, you too can, uh, of course, get good, clean audio results from this microphone. So, like I said, it is a very sensitive microphone. Um, before I had bought this microphone, I had found out that these super cardioid shotgun microphones, um, they typically are both sensitive uh, here in the front, 
where the uh, you would actually speak into the microphone or you'd face this towards your subject or at least your sound source but they're also sensitive here towards the rear of the microphone where sound travels down it um, of course almost like a I don't know how you describe it um, almost just a very sensitive bridge between the diaphragm uh, further back here and then back here towards where your connection is made um, I would say that when I was using this with the uh, makeshift boom pole that I've made um, I haven't shown that yet um, but the other day when I was using this it was a very windy day outside and um, to cut down on the noise I had actually used this right here this is a Craftsman uh, clip of course there are off-brand versions of this that will work just as good I know that Harbor Freight has some that are uh, very cheap but uh, these uh, clips are surprisingly really good at uh, securing cables and that happened to uh, cut down on a majority of the noise in addition to just not you know moving your hands like right now as you can see I'm moving my thumb against this uh, clip but when you're using a microphone or a boom pole like that um, like I said it's very sensitive it will pick up on this movement it will pick up on this sound further back on the microphone you know back here where your XLR connections made if I can get it to focus again you know back here where your connections made and then of course to your cables it will pick up on all that because it's that sensitive and it's made to essentially um, cancel out the sounds coming in through the side so the diaphragm is really sensitive going in but then on the sides you have more cancellation of the noise and um, you know it just makes for a very um, interesting recording experience it's not the same as your typical microphone and that's one of the reasons why I wanted this is because I knew it would be good at picking up on certain sounds but yeah I used this the other day on a very windy day where I wanted to record outside and I'd actually recorded some bird calls that were several yards away in the woods and I had used this microphone and I would used this uh, dead cat this uh, you know this muff here for the wind and with it blowing as hard as it was I still managed to pick up clean audio of the bird calls you know several yards into the woods from where I was standing I wasn't in the woods I was outside of the woods and I still got good clean results uh, from this and I was very impressed by that but um, in terms of the overall recording quality for vocals that's a whole nother story personally I think that this microphone this XM55 it's very bassy but at the same time it has sort of a muffled sound to it and I don't know if it's the type of equipment I'm using so for instance um, like I've used on a majority of my projects I use this this Olympus VN 541 PC uh, voice recorder um, I use it on music mode there's four different modes but music mode is the cleanest one that's on here this is about a $40 voice recorder from Walmart and I've been using it for a majority of the things that I've worked on and it has a uh, earbud adapter here and it has a built-in microphone on it and then it also has your uh, connection for whatever external microphone you have and that's this one right here and for those of you that don't know you need to have this turned on with a battery in it in order to record and then as far as phantom power is concerned I haven't tried that yet because I know some people say that you don't want to run certain microphones with phantom power because you'll blow them out so it is a bit of a learning curve but um, I don't know I've, I'm somewhat impressed by this I think this microphone with the type of sound quality you get it requires a lot more post-processing through either EQ or compression um, because I think the vocals on it are very good but they could be better and that's where you know you have to do all your post-processing which most productions will do that anyway and that's just something you need to do when you're using this type of equipment anyway there was a few more things I wanted to say about this microphone more specifically about uh, the uses for this microphone in the industry uh, so for a majority of people, uh, voice actors use shotgun microphones, 
Um, shotgun microphones have been used on uh, film sets for uh, sound design and Foley artists that make uh, sound effects. Um, these have been used for nature uh, recording and nature documentaries. Um, I can tell you right now, having used this, it is excellent for bird calls and sounds that are uh, out in nature. That's what it's uh, really designed for. And just the way that this microphone is designed, I think it's a much better um, alternative to the other microphones that are often listed online. Um, I know that there's a Techstar um, cold shoe microphone on there that a lot of people have been praising. But honestly, this one here is more versatile. I mean, it's smaller in size you can bring it around easier it's surprisingly not too crazy big i think this is only around maybe 11 inches it's not i don't even think it's around a foot but um anyway yeah that's that's some of the things that i've you know discovered looking into this microphone typically the xm55 model from what i've seen could range anywhere in price from around $40 used almost up to $90 of course that's if you're buying a brand new kit um, as far as I know the microphone is quite old at this point I think it was released in 2013 um, but I think a majority of people sell these brand new with the complete kit but some people do sell them used with the majority of the accessories missing and um, yeah I just kinda got lucky by getting this one um, I did find out that um, after I bought this, if I had bought the other alternative on eBay, I wouldn't have actually lost that much money. Um, there's only like a seven cents difference between buying this on shopgoodwill.com compared to buying it on eBay. Um, of course, that's, you know, if I'm getting one used and then, you know, this one was also used. And um, that's just some of the things I wanted to talk about with this microphone before I actually test it out and give you a demonstration on how it records uh, vocal quality and um, voiceovers of course in a uh, you know with it uh, in action anyway one last thing before I actually test this out I wanted to show this off this is a uh, I've used this for a decoration for a majority of the time but um, you can use this in a professional setting uh, I think a majority of people know what this is. This is a film slate, also known as a, uh, I think a clapper. Some people refer to it as a clapper. And um, when you're on set, of course, before you start recording, you want to do that so that you can sync up your audio when you're re uh, recording. And also for post-production reasons, you're going to want to use a film slate before you start recording, you know, on set. And um, I just want to get that out of the way. For those of you that don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to give you the audio test uh, right now. Okay, this is a test of the microphone on my voice recorder. Um, of course, I have the volume up at uh, 30, which is the maximum limit. Uh, this is a test without the dead cat or the wind muff. Um, I'm, of course, uh, recording in an untreated room with no soundproofing. And um, I'm speaking directly down the barrel, I'm trying my best not to move around too much so that there's a lot less noise during the recording. And um, this is without, of course, the other accessories, and I will do those uh, immediately afterward. This is a test of the microphone with the wind muff, not to be confused with the dead cat. Um, I've barely even used this wind muff. I tried using it the other day when I was recording outside and um, I couldn't really tell much of a difference especially with the wind it actually made the audio sound worse and I found out that the dead cat actually produced a much cleaner result and uh, of course I'm trying my best not to move around too much 
so that I can have a clean audio recording and after this I'm going to move over to the dead cat and now I'm recording with the dead cat um, I used this the other day when it was extremely windy outside but yet when I use this uh, sound cancellation you know filter like you know I'm using now um, surprisingly I managed to pick up on a, a bird sounds you know several yards off into the wilderness all right so having listened to my audio again um, I do feel that it is somewhat muffled um, of course there, like I said, it's a microphone that I think would need a lot more post-processing to actually sound as good as you'd need it to. Um, like I said, I'm recording in a room with no soundproofing. There's no soundproof foam in here or anything. And um, you might have picked up on a humming, like a mechanical kind of humming sound. That's uh, I'm actually recording on top of the freezer in the uh, utility room of my house. Um, you know, go figure. Um it's just nice and convenient for me. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah, anyway, as far as the overall audio quality goes, um, like I said, I think it needs a lot more post-processing to actually sound really nice. Uh, like I'd said before, shotgun microphones have been used for several Hollywood uh, productions, sound design, uh, nature documentaries, and uh, sound effects. Um, you name it, uh, dialogue, um, and of course there's there's situations where the audio will sound better and worse. Um, from what I understand, apparently, um, if you use it as sort of an overhead, um, you know, like up here, uh, like a boom uh, mic, uh, the audio will usually sound better. Um, it usually sounds better when you're outside, out and about, and not, you know, in an enclosed room with no sound, uh, you know, proofing to really boost the quality of the audio. Um, there's just certain situations where it will sound a lot better. Um, I've heard people say that you might want to position the microphone facing your chest, while other people say you want to face it straight down, um, facing more towards your nose. Um, I really don't know. Um, each method is different and has varying degrees of success. And, um, I don't know, that's just what my thoughts are regarding the the VidPro uh, Super Cardioid Condenser Microphone 13-piece uh, kit. And with that being said, my name is Clayton, bringing you new content whenever possible. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.